I make extensive use of the um, PCB prototyping houses that we all, all know and love now um, in China. Places like Seed Studio, IT, Elecro, uh, PCB Way, JLPCB, just to name just a few. Um, I've been using them probably eight years now at least. Uh, I guess that's um, going back to more or less when they started. And what spurred me on um, to make this video today is the quality of the one that I received recently is really, really good. In fact, it's a step up from um, all of the other ones that I've had in the past. And I wanted to just go back in time a bit and we'll show you how the um, manufacturing has improved over the years um, in areas uh, such as the solder mask registration, which is something I'll go through and tell you what that is um, in a bit, and the um, the way the, the drill accuracy is done. Um, we'll go back and uh, we'll show this one, which is um, the most recent one that I received. This one's from JLPCB, and this is the one that's really high quality. Um, this one was from PCB Way some time ago. Um, again, this one's another very good quality one, um, but it's a, it's a couple of years old. Um, going back even further, this one is uh, Seed Studio, um, and it was probably about four four years ago. And you can see the quality on this one um, is more how it used to be rather than how it is, but we'll see when we get to do some close-ups. And this is one of the oldest that I've, I've got. Um, it goes back probably eight years. Uh, I think I even did this one in Eagle, I can tell by the, um, the, by the font on there. Uh, and this is when the quality was, you know, there were noticeable problems in, in the quality in, in all areas. And, and we'll start with this one, actually. Um, and it means I'm going to have to get my macro lens out. So we'll switch to that. We'll show some close-ups and, and, and we'll see how the areas have improved over, over the years. Right, the first area we're going to look at is um, drill registration or drill accuracy. This is how accurate the, 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 the drill hits in the center of the, um, the hole where you're aiming. And the two areas where this is important are um, vias, obviously, um, and the holes for through-hole components. Um, if you look at um, vias, for example, this is the oldest board that I've got, and this is where the, where the accuracy was pretty poor. Um, you can see, if I can just grab a pointer and try and, try and point out, these vias here, um, the, the, the drill has almost completely missed the, um, the, you know, the, the copper, it's the little copper circle. Um, when you design a via, you, you do leave, you, know, you do make it big enough um, to uh, allow for the you know, drill registration to be, to be poor. But in, back in, the, in these days, uh, about eight years ago, the, the drill registration was really bad. You can see, as, as I pointed out, it virtually misses the via there. It doesn't miss it, but it's, it's come out the side. Um, and on the bigger holes, you can see um, it's, the, the, it's missed there as well. Um, the, you know, the hole you've got in the middle is on this particular, um, this particular through hole component is way to the right of where it should be. That's one of the areas where, where, they, were, where they were particularly bad. Now, if, this is a two layer board. Um, let's move to um, the next one in time, which is probably about five years ago. And this is a four layer board. Um, in this case, the uh, the fire registration, the drill registrations got better, but it's it's still not brilliant. Um, you can see, for example, that that fire there, the the drills hit to the right of where it should. Um, it, it's off center, and this grid, you can see that you know they look a bit kind of like you know ovals and teardrops and things rather than actual circles with uh, drill holes right in the center. So although things have improved, did improve by then, they they're still not great. And um, so not up to a professional board level, it's you know, very definitely a prototype. Now, forward again, this is the one that was um, done by PCB Way, and it's a four layer board. Um, it's, it's actually for my um, frequency analyzer, yeah, you can, which you frequency counter, sorry, that you can see on my, on my website. Um, the drill accuracy here is just streets ahead. They, it's pretty much bang in the center. Every single one on this board, you know, every drill hole is more or less where it ought to be. You, can, you can't really pick holes in it. You can't complain about that. Um, it's, it's very good. So about two, two years ago, I think uh, you know, accuracy, accuracy had improved, certainly on the four layer process, which may be done um, you know, d d using better equipment than the two layer boards. That's always a possibility. Um, but they had improved to be uh, you know, very accurate at this time. Now, fast forward to today, and I got this one, and the story is the same. The the accuracy is perfect. It's the, the drills are drill holes are smack bang in the middle. This is one from JLPCB. Um, they probably have the most they have the most com most competitive four layer pricing I've ever seen at the moment. I got these a set of ten um, hundred mil uh, by hundred mil hundred millimeter by hundred millimeter boards for twenty seven dollars delivered, which was you know, incredible. The one the sets that I got from PCB way cost fifty bucks. 
Um, so we're, we're looking at almost you know half the price now, which is really good. I I, look, I love my four layer boards. They just they save me so much time in routing. Um, it's great. So yeah, these you know the, the drill accuracy now is still brilliant on the at least on the four layer process, and you can pretty much rely on it. So the next thing we'll look at, and it's the thing that I really noticed when I got these boards, is the solder mask. Um, so let's go back to the beginning again. Okay, solder mask registration. Now, the placement of solder mask is really important when you're doing hobby level stuff because of the way that we tin our boards. Um, and I'll get, I'll show one of the um, one of the other boards as a as a good example where um, solder mask registration is very important between the um, legs of an IC to prevent bridging. Now this is the oldest oldest board, and the solder mask registration on here is, is I, because it's, I did, did, did this in Eagle, I can't remember what the rules are, I'm afraid, so I'm going to skip that one. Um, the solder mask actually looks pretty good before I skip on there. It's not bad, it doesn't overlap the pads. Um, but I'll bring up the next one in line to show how it can be particularly bad. Now this is the four layer board. Now the, when you, um, when you put down a component's footprint on, um, on one of your PCBs and you export the Gerbers, the, there's a solder mask layer and that's a, a layer that shows where the solder mask should not be applied and generally speaking um, in the professional level um, PCB packages you have something called the solder mask expansion and it's applied around the, um, the footprints for the pads. It, it, it basically pulls back the solder mask by a set amount around the pad um, to allow for inaccuracies in the placement of, of the solder mask during the manufacturing process. In the package I use, the default solder mask expansion is 4mm around um, the pads. And that's, that's a fair default. And you can see in this, in this particular PCB that you actually need it. If you look at these, um, these pads up here on R16, you can see that there's a space in the solder mask almost all to the right, nothing anywhere else really. And it's because all of that um, four mil expansion around the solder, or around the, um, the, you know, the component pads has been taken up um, you know, by, in the engineering process as the solder mask has slipped to the right a bit. And in this case, I did need the expansion. And you can see that the, you know, the process wasn't particularly great. Um, and if we move on to the uh, PCB way one here, in, in this, in this uh, four, four layer board, the solder mask um, was very good. The placement was very good. Looking at any component, let's take R17 there, the diagonal one in the center. If you look very closely, you can see that there's a tiny little um, sliver of a gap around the solder mask, and it's about four mil and it goes all the way around the, um, the, the, you know, the pad. So that the placement of the mask in this more modern process has been very good. Now the difficulty with having um, solder mask expansion like this is when you come to uh, place an IC that's, let's say it's got a half a millimeter, you know, 0 0.5 millimeter um, pin pitch. The problem is that the solder mask expansion will take out the entire mask around the, um, the legs. So if I get take up, go to this, um, one up here, for example, that is an STM32 footprint, and the solder mask has um, been taken out completely from around the um, the IC. So, tinning this um, board is a pain because the way I do it is I, you know, I load up the uh, soldering iron with some with some molten solder, and I just drag it across the, the the iron bit across the pads. And if there's no solder mask between those legs, I'm almost guaranteed to get a bridge. Um, between them, which I then have to clean up and it's messy and I don't like it and I'd rather it not happen. If you have um, solder mask between those legs, then th there's no way you'll get a bridge. The solder mask will repel the solder and it will stick um, very easily to those pins. Same goes for all of these. That's an FPGA. There's, there's um, half millimeter pitch on those on those pins as well. And that, that that's... Um, has resulted in um, you know no solder mask being between, and in some cases you actually get um, the way you get you get slivers of solder mask. I'm trying to find one where it's happened here. That's where that that's um, a QFN package there. But in that case the um, pin pitch was greater than half a millimeter, or the actual space between was greater than half a millimeter. So the solder mask stuck, and that's good. Um, I was able to solder that. Um, particularly easily and that's important for a QFM because I hate them, <laughs> I hate doing those manually. Um, so what, if it, what, what happens if you get uh, a sliver too short is that um, sometimes they'll just, they'll just peel up from the board. I think I can see one here at the top right of that uh, U1 where the solder mask has disappeared um, because it was too thin and it just, it just didn't adhere to the board correctly and, and got um, taken up in the process somewhere along the line the packaging it probably just peeled up and disappeared. 
not a problem for the, you know, for working, it hasn't broken the board, it's just, um, you know, it's a pain. So if I move on to the uh, most recent one that's arrived from uh, JLPCB, this is one that where I really had to look twice at what they'd done. This is the same STM32 footprint that you saw on the PCB way board. And as you can see, the solder mask is intact between all the legs. Um, I don't know what they did with my design files here, um, because my design files have, have the default 4mm solder mask expansion in them. But they've either completely ignored the design files or just, just ignored that layer, just taken that layer out. The layer was definitely in the Gerbers that I sent them. Um, but I'm pleased that they did, because the accuracy of the mask placement has been perfect. There's, there's no overlap with the pads whatsoever, and the mask is completely intact around all of those narrow, um, those narrow leg uh, footprints. So I was really, really impressed with that. And, and going around to the um, discrete components like C44 and C38 there, um, again, there is just zero gap around those, um, those pads. Not at all. It's like they've completely ignored my expansion mask layer. But uh, there's no overlap. The, the, you know, the, the placement of the mask has been perfect. There was no need for an expansion layer. Um, so in future, I think I know when, I'm going to, when I'll be ordering four-layer boards, and this is a four-layer board, um, that I shall definitely reduce or just completely eliminate the solder mask expansion um, layer from uh, from design files that I send to JLPCB because it just looks like they don't need them. They don't need any expansion. It's just, it, yeah, I mean, there's an, that's a big pitch pin, a big pin pitch IC. I think it's 1.27 millimeters. But you can see there that there's just no expansion around the, around the um, you know, the solder layer. That's, that's really, really nice. Yeah, this is a four-layer board though, so I, I can't possibly say that it would be the same for um, for two-layer boards. You know, people do often anecdotally say that the four-layer boards go to a different factory or they run a different process because they're, um, you know, they're, they're a more advanced uh, technology. Um, oh, and there's my telltale. I should point that out. When you, a good a good tip for people doing four-layer boards is that um, when you um, when you do your design, strip off the um, all of the solder mask from top and bottom and uh, put uh, little letters, uh, like telltales on each layer side by side so you can make sure that they've got the stack up right because this has got um, a it's, you know, component layer on top then there's a, a solid ground plane below and then there's a, a split power, power plane below that and then the bottom layer. Um, what this shows me is that the next um, layer down is ground and they haven't gone and swapped it with the power plane so I know that they've got it right and if I look on the bottom and I can see through the um, same way, and I can see P backwards, of course, because I'm looking from the bottom. And I know that the next one down below that is the power plane. So they've got it. They've got the stack up right, because there's no way you can you can tell because it's sandwiched together. You need to have some way of, of seeing through to make sure they got it right. So anyway, that's all I wanted to say really. I just wanted to highlight the, the you know the process improvements that I've seen over the years. Um, and to the point now where I'm really, really impressed with, uh, with what's coming out of places like uh, PCBWay and JLPCB, um, at least with the four layer process. You know, and that's, that has long been a process that um, I would only use if necessary because it was costing me $50 a go at PCBWay. But now, now it's uh, coming down to $27 delivered. I'll, I'll happily use that um, you know, more, more often than I would because it just the time that it saves me in, in you know, sitting in front of the computer and, and sorting out ground and sorting out power and all that stuff. It's just what a pain. Uh, much easier when you can just drop a via and you, you're suddenly on, the, on your power plane or your, um, your, your ground layer. Anyway, so that's all. Um, I hope you all enjoyed that and I hope it informed, might inform your um, design decisions as you go forward. Thanks for watching and ha have a great day.